I'd like to do um, just a little bit of notation before we jump into doing an example of multiple regression in R. So just remember um, from simple linear regression, we had one quantitative response variable and we had one explanatory variable. And then the parameters when we fit this model uh, would be our beta zero and beta one. And we would fit y hat is equal to beta zero hat plus beta one hat x. Now we're moving on to a multiple linear regression where we still just have a quantitative response variable, but we have a more than one explanatory variable. So we could have beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four, all the way out to beta p. We still are assuming that our residuals are normally distributed, but we can have lots more explanatory variables. And then we just fit more coefficients. Y hat is equal to beta zero hat plus beta one hat x one plus beta two hat x two plus out to beta p hat x p. So as we're doing multiple regression, I'd like you to be thinking about um, the geometric shape of the models in space. So um, we've talked about this a little bit before. Uh, we could have a case where x1 is quantitative and x2 is a categorical indicator variable. Um, so it's just binary. It has 0 and 1. Um, and then we could think about our, our model. And you know, we've got y hat is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat x1 plus beta 2 hat x2. And I could think about the two ways to write out the model. So I could have y hat where we have x1 and we've got x2 set equal to zero. And then the other version y hat where we've got x1 and then we've got x2 set to one. So if we do, uh, if we plug in zero for x2, then this term is just gonna go to zero and I'm gonna have my equation beta zero hat plus beta one hat x1. And then if I plug in one for x2, then I'm just gonna get this beta two hat. And then I can combine together my beta zero hat and my beta two hat to make a sort of different intercept. And then I'll still have my beta one hat x1. And this is called a parallel slopes model. And the reason why it's called that is because it has parallel slopes. So you could think about parallel positive slopes. We could also have parallel negative slopes, whatever the slope is, uh, it would be parallel. So that's kind of a simple version of a multiple regression equation. Um, that was the one that we started previewing last week. But we could also have multiple regression with a second quantitative variable. So let's say that x1 is quantitative, but x2 is also quantitative. So now I don't have that nice way of plugging in just zero or one because x1 and x2 both have, you know, sort of continuous possibilities. So now my model is no longer a line. It's now a plane that lives in three dimensions. So I'm going to try and draw a picture in three dimensions. I'll show you some 3D visualizations when we get into R, uh, which will probably be nicer than my drawings. But let's just think about this uh, in a drawing first. So here's my plane. And I'll, I'll shade it in with a highlighter so that we can kind of think about it as this, this flat plane in 3D space. And then if we think about our data points, um, which are existing in, in 3D space, we can still make predictions on the model, but the model is now not a uh, line, it is a plane. And so um, I can think about dropping the data point down onto the model plane to get the predicted value. So uh, maybe I have a predicted value here, I've got a predicted value here. Uh, let's say that this, um, this point is underneath the plane, so maybe it gets uh, projected up onto the plane and it's got a predicted value here. Maybe this one is really close. This one needs to be projected up more. Um, this one is going to be projected down and down and up. 
and down. So we can still do those projections onto the plane, um, but it's not just gonna be a line or a parallel line. And then I probably should have put another slide in here about this, but if I added um, a third variable here, so let's say x3, um, and this one is gonna be categorical, and let's say it has three levels, that would be a parallel planes model. And so I can kind of visualize that. Again, I'm gonna do a drawing, trying to draw in 3D. We'll see how it goes. And again, I think I'm gonna try and shade these in with some highlighters so we can think about um, which plane we're thinking about. So here's my top plane is pink, and then I'll do the one below it in yellow, and then the one on the very bottom I'll do in blue. And again, um, I might have you know data points that are existing in 3D, and and those could be projected onto whatever plane was appropriate. So um, if it was a point that was from the the yellow group, uh, then I would project it up onto that plane. Um, but if it had been instead from the, the pink group, then I could project it up onto that plane. And the difference between those projections would be um, kind of that, that intercept term that gets uh, combined with my beta zero. Um, and then we can get even more complex here. So if we had, uh, you know, sort of a plane like we've just been talking about, um, then we can talk about the the impact of uh, you know x1 by interpreting the coefficient you know the beta one hat or the beta two hat, um, and that's going to be sort of regardless of what's going on with the other variable. So that would be a plane. Um, but we can go even stranger than that. We can in include interaction terms. So if we had uh, an x1, which was quantitative, and x2, which is quantitative, we could have a beta1 coefficient for the x1, a beta2 coefficient for the x2, and then we could have a beta3 that would be the coefficient on the interaction between x1 and x2. And this one is a warped plane. x1 and x2 can vary together. I don't know if I can draw a very good version of this, but I will attempt it. And we'll try and color it in a little bit. I think this is gonna make a lot more sense when I can show it to you uh, in a better 3D visualization. Um, and on that, I think I'm going to move over to our studio and try and do some examples with actual values. So hopefully this will become more concrete. I might need to come back to the iPad to write some things down. So we'll see how that goes.